Why do prices seem to fluctuate so much? In order to answer this question, we must first understand what causes inflation. Inflation shows us the rate at which prices are rising, which impacts everything from your morning coffee to your newest gadgets. Rising labor and raw material prices, increasing consumer demand, or even significant shifts in interest rates and taxes can all be reasons for this. Get ready to crack the code on the mystery of why inflation continues to rise and fall. Have you ever wished that prices would just stay the same? Haven't you felt it's like trying to catch the wind, always changing, always moving? A solid understanding of why prices change is crucial for making wise financial decisions. Whether you're a student, a savvy shopper, or just interested in the economy, this knowledge can empower you. In 2022, there was exceptionally high inflation in many regions of the world. Inflation in the US, UK, and Eurozone reached approximately 10%. That means prices increased by 10% from the previous year. The good news is that inflation has decreased. However, it is still somewhat high and is now closer to normal levels. The shocking thing is that this chart displays the rate of change, not a drop in prices. Confused? Let me break it down for you. Prices have not decreased, rather they've merely slowed down in their rate of rise, and that's truly disgusting. Businesses are struggling, consumers are under stress, and governments are desperately trying to come up with solutions. Will there ever be an end to inflation? Let me explain it with a real-life example. You've always wanted a bike. You find the perfect one at the store for $650, but you only have $300. Determined, you managed to save $650 after a month. However, you discovered that the bike now costs $720 when you go back to the store. This annoying price increase is a result of inflation. These kinds of stories are everywhere these days, with the cost of things reaching an all-time high. If the bike's price dropped to $580 instead, this is negative inflation or deflation, but unfortunately, it's not that simple. The increase in inflation is seriously depleting our financial resources. People are focusing only on making ends meet and cutting back on unnecessary purchases. All you can do is hope for some stability and survive till the next paycheck. If rising costs cause misery for everyone, why can't the price merely remain the same? Why is inflation never zero? One major reason for this is that governments and central banks really do not want it to be zero. To keep their economies running smoothly, many countries try to meet what's known as the inflation target. The current inflation target in the United States is approximately 2%. This is not a random figure, rather, it is what most central banks globally strive for. The goal is to establish a virtuous cycle, as defined by economists. This is how it happens. When prices begin to rise, consumers anticipate that they will continue to rise. People are therefore more willing to spend money on major goods like appliances or cars before the prices rise further. As basic necessities such as food and clothing become more expensive, we end up spending more money. The more people spend, the more businesses earn, allowing them to hire more employees. Then, those workers have more money to spend, which increases demand and raises prices even further. And just like that, the cycle continues to run. Maintaining balance is largely dependent on this cycle of growing costs and earnings. You can still purchase the same items even if the costs increase and salaries grow in parallel. But here's the catch. Salaries must rise in line with inflation to make that work. For a while, life was difficult for many in the United States as earnings fell behind inflation. What's the good news? Since the middle of 2023, pay increases have outpaced inflation. The truth is that lower class salaries have not only kept pace with inflation, but have occasionally exceeded it. This change is beneficial, especially since salaries have been at extremely low levels for too long. Even though growing salaries is a positive move, we're still not there. If there's a disruption in this cycle, we might return to the high levels of inflation we've experienced in recent years. The positive feedback loop became negative when supply chain problems led to product shortages, and some businesses raised prices to increase profits. Costs continue to rise, making it difficult for people to keep up. Is it possible to stop inflation? How? To fight increasing inflation, governments have a few different strategies. An increase in interest rates is an effective strategy. This results in an equal increase in the cost of borrowing money for loans or credit cards. Due to the increased cost of borrowing, companies and people reduce their spending, which slows down the flow of money. The government could increase taxes in order to reduce spending further. They occasionally attempt to set price caps on particular items, but it's not always successful. An increase in borrowing costs makes it more difficult and expensive for businesses to make investments and recruit more staff. Thus, the economy begins to slow down. For example, in 2022, the U.S. Federal Reserve increased interest rates to try and get inflation closer to its 2% target. Although this helped reduce inflation, it also increased the pressure on families who needed loans to survive. 
when the Fed hikes interest rates in an attempt to control inflation, it's like applying the brakes to the economy. It can lead to layoffs and make it more difficult for people to maintain their financial stability. The economy as a whole experiences a slowdown in expenditure when the Fed hikes interest rates. The intention is to instill a sense of expectation that inflation will decline. But what happens if prices begin to decline rather than rise? This is referred to as deflation. Although paying less might seem good, it might cause other issues. Falling prices can trigger a complex cycle known as deflationary spiral in which the economy could get stuck. How does that work and why does it matter? Let's investigate it more. People may wait to purchase large products in the hopes that the price will drop even further. The cost of everyday essentials falls, resulting in a decrease in overall spending. Companies lose money when consumers spend less. Businesses may begin to lay off employees in order to reduce their costs. People who are jobless or even employed could set aside extra money in case of hardship. The reduction in spending leads to further price reductions. Deflation is more difficult for governments to fight than inflation. In the spring of 2020, when inflation dropped below 2%, the United States lowered interest rates to nearly zero at 0.05%. The plan was successful when inflation began to slowly rise again after a period of dropping. But if it hadn't, the government would have had few choices. Since interest rates were already almost at zero, there may have been major issues. True deflationary periods are rare but difficult to fix. Deflation contributed to the Great Depression and it required the significant economic stimulus of World War II to bring it to an end. Japan has emerged from decades of chronic deflation, thanks in part to the recent high inflation that much of the world has experienced. It is not ideal to rely on these aggressive techniques. If you start reading and watching a lot of stuff regarding inflation, you'll discover something interesting. The economy actually needs a small amount of inflation in order to function properly, but why? If inflation falls below zero, solving the problem becomes more challenging. This is the main reason we oppose 0% inflation. Even with only minor variations, inflation will always fluctuate. If inflation stays too low and turns into deflation, a negative cycle can begin. Deflation comes at a very high cost, so we want to avoid it at all costs. To prevent it, we aim for a slightly higher inflation rate. Higher salaries, greater demand, and a growth in the amount of money in circulation are some of the reasons for inflation that economists highlight. In 2022, a number of events including the COVID-19 pandemic's aftermath, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and increases in the cost of food and energy combined to cause inflation to reach its worst level since the 1980s.